Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is uh, Tuesday, I think, January 22nd. Uh, I've been I've been out for a few days at the March for Life and the uh, LCMS Life Conference in Washington, D.C., which was a fantastic experience. Uh, we'll be able to hopefully do a little debrief with, uh, with some other people who went to that, as well as some of the conversations I was able to have with some people we were marching with. Uh, fantastic experience. If you haven't been to a March for Life, I highly recommend that you either uh, uh, take some time to go to the one in D.C. next year or, or search out your local one to go to. It's, it's a pretty, pretty incredible experience. Um, and Andy is still out sick. Wah, wah. Feel better, Andy. Uh, well, he may be out for a little while, but uh, he'll be back. He'll be back eventually. Uh, we miss him here a lot. <laughs> uh, thanks to our underwriter, Concordia University of Wisconsin, for your support of the Coffee Hour. You can find out more about them at cuw.edu, or you can go to our website, kfuo.org, and look for them in the sponsor section. So we're, uh, we're nearing the end of January. Uh, which means we're still in the season of Epiphany. If you've been paying attention to your liturgical calendars, hopefully, uh, or the the hymns and the readings and the the liturgical colors in church, uh, and we've been talking about it a lot here on the Coffee Hour, which uh, hopefully you've been okay with because it's Epiphany and Epiphany is awesome, and uh, we can never really talk enough about liturgical seasons. So, uh, joining me in studio today to talk about some more hymns and theology, which uh, of course. It's super fun. Dr. Jim Marriott, Director of Musical Arts at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Thanks for joining me. It's always an honor to be with you. Yeah. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. And yeah. this, I mean, it's hymns. That's right. So. What what better thing could we be talking about? <laughs> uh, th- there are not many other things. This is like at the top of my... And especially Epiphany hymns. Like, I, I know. mean, they're so rich in theology and they're so fun so to fun. sing. And yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, you sent me a list of your favorite ones. I did. Um, so... Any, is there anything uh, maybe as a, I don't know, a broad overview of the Epiphany hymns in the hymnal before we dig in? I mean, it, it covers a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, Epiphany itself as a season is is so kind of expansive. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it, it uh, covers so many different stories from the narrative of uh, Jesus' birth and life and, and kind, of, kind of the trajectory of Jesus' ministry. And uh, I love how so many of the hymns capture that, and Epiphany as a season really is um, has its own unique place in telling the story between uh, the narrative of Advent and Christmas and then going into the, the narratives of Lent and Holy Week and Easter. Uh, Epiphany really does a lot to fill out uh, our understanding of who Jesus Christ is and how he works on on our behalf um, and how the Holy Spirit uses that narrative to strengthen our faith. Yeah, I think that's something that I think I've been paying attention to more this year, maybe because we have been talking about Epiphany so much on the coffee hour, um, is that is that that bridge from Christmas to Lent, how um, how our, our liturgy and, and the, the hymns um, really... I mean, it happens really fast because there's a lot that's packed in. Um, but that bridge uh, from Christmas to Lent, it's 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 really interesting how that happens over the course of the season. Exactly. And that kind of the incarnational focus of Christ, too, yeah. you know, that like um, talking about who um, Jesus was as uh, uh, true God and true man and who Jesus is and how um, that work is demonstrated in so many cool ways. And we just had the wedding at Cana. It was mm-hmm. such a great... Um, story Jesus's first miracle and so all of these themes in the uh, um, epiphany hymns kind of come out uh, highlighting the humanity and the mm-hmm. divinity of Jesus is really um, very powerful yeah yeah and these are things we hear about every year so sometimes I think maybe they lose their um, I don't know shiny newness of them it's like oh yeah Jesus turned water into wine that's cool but right. like Jesus turned water into wine yeah exactly <laughs> like, nobody else can do that right <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's cool. It's it's fun to like stop and think about these things for a little while. All right, so your first, first on the list is probably my favorite too. 395, Lutheran Service Book 395, Oh Morning Star, How Fair and Bright. It is just, it's just good. Yeah, for me, Epiphany hymns begin and end with uh, Oh Morning Star, How Fair and Bright. Yeah. You know, so the the queen of chorales, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Vakadalf, uh, Wake yeah. Awake for Night is Flying, is the king of chorales. And so here's the queen of chorales. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah, just you know the the deep nature of this text and the way that it relates uh, who Christ is and and how we live into that narrative 
um, you know, the, we sang this hymn recently at the seminary this last week, and uh, um, students uh, commented on uh, uh, nuances and aspects of the text that they had never seen before. Mm. Um, you know, if you just think about it, even the second stanza talks about uh, Christ coming as a bridegroom and, uh, um, you know, this demonstration of who and what the church is with uh, uh, Jesus as the bridegroom and uh, how our lives are inherently broken by sin and yet Christ comes to redeem that and to redeem us in that so the end of that second stanza now though daily earth's deep sadness may perplex us and distress us yet with heavenly joy you bless us and I don't know about you Sarah but every day I'm living into this like um, kind of the this deep sadness of the earth and mm-hmm. you know just coming off of what you experienced this weekend and <laughs> yeah. some of the conversations that are happening uh, in our country and just the the deep sadness that per- perplexes us and distresses us and yet the epiphany narrative is that Christ comes uh, to redeem and to restore those things um, one of my first memories of this hymn actually was uh, uh, listening to a Paul Mons mm. um, recording of this hymn, and he has um, a really epic uh, interpretation of uh, what is now the sixth stanza, kind of highlighting this idea, um, what joy to know when life is past, the Lord we love is first and last, the end and the beginning, uh, transporting us to the happy place beyond all tears and and sinning. Uh, and it... Um, uh, anyone who's listening who knows this arrangement would immediately identify with it. It has lots of running scales, mm-hmm. and uh, um, both feet are at work on the organ oh, uh, pedals going different <laughs> directions. And I learned it once uh, for a, a hymn festival that I played uh, in honor of my mother, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever learned, but it just really captures that text in a profound way. So kudos to Paul Mons yeah. for uh, um, his legacy for Lutheran church music and uh, yeah. the way to we get to interpret what what uh, um, what that happy place will be like beyond all tears and sin- sinning. So, yeah, Mons yeah, is always great. great. Absolutely, you can't go wrong <laughs> with, with Paul Mons. Yeah. So. Well, we were talking about hymns um, over the Christmas season with our guests, which was super fun. Uh, one of them mentioned that um, when you're paying attention to the text of a hymn, to also pay attention to the punctuation, mm-hmm. because punctuation means something. And so when I was looking through this, uh, I don't know, when I was putting it on social media, for epiphany season i was counting all of the exclamation points they are everywhere like yeah. this breaks the rule of one exclamation right. point per yeah, paragraph it's, it's, it's like, my my kind of hymn you know like yeah that's <laughs> that's how i am you know and it's it's like every single line is an exclamation point yeah we had a student at the seminary last week um anybody who's heard me play organ before knows that i i tend to play loud and so <laughs> no, really yeah right yeah, so epiphany is a, a, a great season for playing loud because you do have all these exclamation points and so i was justified right there in the text that right. it's just asking for for you know good full <laughs> organ accompaniment to all of these hymns uh, yeah i think i think that's fantastic absolutely uh we have about we have about three minutes so Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. And then if we have to break in the middle, that's sure. fine. Yeah, so the, the next one in your in your favorite Epiphany hymns list is also probably, <laughs> they're all my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, LSB uh, 397, As With Gladness, Men of Old. I think this is probably one of the first ones I remember singing with my children, children's choir in grade school. Yep, absolutely. And it's such a sweet text. Uh, it does so much um, for the, the narrative of the, the Magi to to bring us into that story and uh, uh, to help us know how to react to what's going on. And so, you know, the the last line of every stanza, you know, so uh, we've begun, as with gladness, men of old did the guiding star behold, and then the end, so most gracious Lord, may we evermore be led by these. So as they were led, we are led. And as they... um, uh, uh, speed to bend their knee, so we with willing feet ever seek thy mercy seat. As they offer their gifts, so may we all our costliest treasures bring, Christ to thee, our heavenly King. And then, um, and then we pray that we might be kept faithful through our life until we come uh, to the inheritance of the promises that we have received, um, where we'll need no star to guide, where no clouds thy glory hide. 
Um, and uh, then we celebrate that Jesus Christ is that perpetual light that we will um, uh, be with forever. And it's just a, a wonderful, rich hymn, such a simple melody, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, very fun to sing, great for kids' choirs. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, I, I have memories of my mother singing this and crying at the, you know, and I, I still get emotional when whenever we sing it. Uh, today, just you know, the the simplicity, but the the profound nature of of what's going on in this text, and how the the hymn melody carries it in such a beautiful way. Yeah, yeah. I was I was doing this one for social media uh, last week at some point, um, and and I always have to I have to read through the text and decide. Well, am I going to use the first verse because everybody knows it, or am I going to pick a different one because everybody needs to know it? Okay. And with this one, um, I ended up picking the fifth stanza mm-hmm. because it's it's so. Uh, it's just so happy. Exactly. And I love how it pulls in uh, Revelation yes, into exactly. into Epiphany. Yep, which is, again, the, the cool thing about Epiphany as a bridge, um, you know, it tells the whole story um, as a season in a unique way that really points us exactly um, to what we have to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the theme of, uh, of light throughout Epiphany, exactly. um, yep. bringing that in from, from Revelation, those verses in Revelation. I don't know. It's it's just cool. Yeah, it's the it's the fulfillment of uh, John one. You know, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. I mean, that's exactly what's going on here. So, like the darkness of our, you know, this uh, uh, daily sin and death that perplexes mm-hmm. and distresses us, it will not um, overcome us. Yeah, and it's interesting. Interesting. Oh, too much coffee already today. <laughs> <laughs> um, singing about um, singing about the Magi and what. Right. Um, what the, that revelation to them uh, actually means mm-hmm. for us. Exactly, right. Well, and it's such a, you know, a misunderstood story anyway in terms of, you know, all the narratives that go around about who they were and how they were working. But, uh, yeah, exactly, that we might um, see how God worked through them and to see how God is also working by the power of, power of the Holy Spirit through us um, uh, to be faithful disciples in all that we say and do. I mean, it's really neat how we get to serve. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. Well, we need to take our break, uh, but we're going to come back and talk about more hymns because it's Tuesday and why not? Dr. Jim Mary, Director of Musical Arts at Concordia Seminary St. Louis. We will be right back after this break. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. Hi, this is Bart Day, President and CEO of Lutheran Church Extension Fund. For the last 40 years, LCEF has had the humble privilege of supporting the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. As we celebrate this milestone in the life of our organization, I wanted to take a moment to recognize all the individuals, congregations, schools, and organizations who serve to fulfill the mission of making the love of Christ known to our communities and the world. We look forward to another 40 years of partnership. Visit us at lcef.org to learn more. Join Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service and congregations across the country as we celebrate Refugee Sunday, a time to lift up the gifts that migrants and refugees bring to our country and to reflect on Christ's message to welcome the stranger. Together, we can continue the mission of welcoming, embracing, and empowering newcomers. Visit lirs.org slash kit to download the Refugee Sunday Kit for your congregations, including worship guides, bulletin inserts, videos, and more. lirs.org slash kit. The skills you can develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you an edge in the high-tech job market of tomorrow. The Guard offers career training to take advantage of your skills in science, technology, engineering, and math that can help give you a leg up to a high-paying and rewarding STEM profession. Get a head start on your career while earning money to pay for college. Log on to NationalGuard.com to learn about all of the STEM career opportunities in the Army National Guard. Sponsored by the Missouri Army National Guard. Aired by the Missouri Broadcasters Association and this station. Hi, I'm Pastor Mark Hawkinson. You know, life is a potpourri of good experiences and really tough challenges. Through all those times you need, and so do I, the Lord's precious word and sacred music to get you through. That's what you get when you tune in to Moments of Assurance, Christ-centered songs, scripture, news items, trivia, humor, you name it. 
So tune in. You'll be richer for it. Over the noontime hour here on Worldwide KFUO. Moments of Assurance is underwritten by Mid-American Coaches. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. Uh, it is Tuesday, January 22nd, which means we are in the season of Epiphany still, which is fine by me, really. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Epiphany hymns because uh, we can never talk about hymns enough. There's always more to discover. And uh, with me still in the studio is Dr. Jim Marriott, Director of Musical Arts at Concordia Seminary, St. Louis. Thanks for sticking around with me today. Yep, so fun to be part of it. Yeah, I, yeah, it's just fun. It's fun to talk about hymns with somebody else who's also really excited about talking yeah. about hymns. Uh, again, like I don't, uh, we said this last segment, but what better thing could we be talking about? I mean, it's just so yeah. fulfilling to talk about hymns and how yeah. they work in our lives. Well, and we, we get to sing them. Hopefully people get to sing the ones that we're talking about. Um, but it's, it makes such a difference to, um, to, to understand the words and to actually pay attention to the words, uh, especially maybe, I don't know, for, for parents who are wrangling kids and maybe you're singing the words, but you're actually thinking about what your child's doing exactly, or you're distracted or, or whatever. Um, when there's something, at least for me, um, you know, that is lifelong about hymns. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I love music that speaks to us in the moment. And I think that that's very important. Um, but I also love music and these texts that can speak to us over a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the more I, um, uh, play hymns and lead hymns and teach hymns and mm -hmm. sing hymns, the more I realize how profound and deep some of these texts are and how they sustain my understanding of Christianity um, and my performance of that faith, you know, how I live into acting out that faith. Uh, these hymns really speak to that and uh, uh, inform that in a very profound way. And it's, it, you know, so I've done a lot of self-reflection, um, just realizing how important hymns have been in my formation and in, you know, um, the way that I articulate my faith, the way mm -hmm. that I live out my faith, and now as a parent, the way that I'm teaching that same faith to my children. Uh, my son, uh, just if you don't mind a quick story. No, go for it. Um, uh, my son is a, a fifth grade trumpeter. Nice. And uh, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, which is really nice. Our public school system uh, starts trumpet uh, or starts band in fourth grade. Mm. So he's a year and a half in now. And, and you know, he's making uh, pretty reasonable sounds on the trumpet. <laughs> and uh, he played for church, uh, uh, O Come All Ye Faithful, mm -hmm. uh, during the, the Christmas season. And it, he did a very good job. So now we've already started looking ahead towards um, a Lenten hymn or two. Oh. And uh, it's neat because he, you know, he's starting to process, even as a fifth grader, the unity of text and melody, text and tune, and um, he'll be memorizing hymns in the same way that, that I did when I was his age. And that will be a, a lifelong legacy for him as well in terms of what his faith is and how he lives out that faith uh, through music. So even as a trumpeter, he's already... Uh, um, uh, getting to live into this idea, and I look forward to continuing to collaborate with him musically. It's really fun that he's getting to this age where we can do a lot of duets and fun things together. So, yeah, I can only imagine yeah. the Marriott household with all of the music. Yeah, you you would think it would be more <laughs> more musical than it is. You know, sometimes <laughs> as parents, we 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 struggle to to make all of these things happen, and you know, sure. time, time escapes all of us. You oh, know, yeah, I just have a, a heart for all of the parents out there, um, and. Uh, uh, all of us are working hard to, to raise our children in the, the way that uh, uh, is faithful to who we are and to mm -hmm. who we're called to be. And, uh, boy, that's not easy. There's a lot of choices that we have to make. Yeah. Um, and we, we, my wife is the best, though. She, uh, she's the one that keeps us all in line and uh, <laughs> uh, keeps us going in the right direction. So it's, it's fun. We have a good partnership. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, very yeah. good. And teaching teaching kids hymns is it's great. And looking back on on all the hymns that I learned growing up, and then and then being so excited about you know getting to sing certain ones. My husband rolls his eyes at me when I like when I, when I see a certain hymn on the hymn board when we get to church, and I like draw a heart over it and right in the, right. the bullet, and he's he just looks at me and smiles and shakes his head. But it's you know it's exciting to be able to sing sing the ones that you love, and and I feel like the older I get and the more 
the more hymns I sing, the more <laughs> the more I add to my list of ones that I that I love. <laughs> Absolutely right, and and I think that's the nature of what hymns are supposed to accomplish for us is to mm-hmm. you know kind of compound this understanding of our faith and and how we get to live it out in our daily life. Yeah, they're all like little mini mini capsules of of different stories or different ideas or themes or something, and then just it nicely summarizes so many things in in each one, and it it still kind of blows my mind how many hymns we have and but they don't all say the same thing, which is amazing. Yep. It's that overlap with the uniqueness of every text. And uh, yeah, and and just, you know, uh, in our Lutheran heritage, the idea that we would um, have some ability to express our faith through music, you Mm -hmm. know, that uh, um, it is something that the Holy Spirit has worked through us individually and our individual expressions of it feed the corporate nature of what the church is. I mean, it's just very, so, you know, all of these texts that we've looked at, and uh, this next one that we were going to look at is, is uh, you know, an old text. And so we have old texts and new texts and uh, old melodies and new melodies, and they all work together in, in really pr- profound ways to demonstrate what the church is and how the church exists in every time and place. Yeah. Yeah. And before yeah. we get to that, you, you just you sparked my uh, my memory of this weekend um, and, and uh, marching in the March for Life. The, the, what makes uh, the LCMS group uh, pretty unique among the rest of the groups that march is that we we uh, sing hymns as we march as this massive group of, you know, a couple hundred people. Um, and that is, I mean, that experience in itself of corporate singing, um, but not in a church on a street in Washington, D.C., all of us singing these hymns together. I mean, that that's a really amazing experience. And then seeing the reaction of the people around us who are either looking at us like we're a little nutty um, or looking at us and then joining in because maybe they know some of the, even if they're not Lutheran, they know some of the hymns that we were singing. Um, that witness to people was really cool. Exactly. Well, and, and one of the, you know, the most unfortunate, unfortunate things about church practice these days is we tend to think of church as just what happens on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I love about hymns, you know, and just that story you told is we get to, you know, live this music out in our daily life. I mean, mm-hmm. this is not Sunday music. This is music that sticks with us through the week. And one of my favorite things is, you know, to hear someone whistling a tune as they leave church on Sunday morning, mm-hmm. because I know that that melody and that text is going to stick with them through the week. And, uh, you know, that that's what it's all about is, is uh, figuring out how to live out the Christian life uh, 24-7. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so before we're out of time, yeah, really. let's talk about this one, because it's a good one. Uh, Lutheran Service Book 403, O Savior of Our Fallen Race. And you mentioned, uh, we were talking about during the break, uh, if you look down, if, if people have their hymnals out, I don't know. Uh, the text is is from, uh, is an old Latin text, mm-hmm. but the tune is a new newer tune from Stephen Johnson, who writes some pretty cool tunes. Um, and that, that combination of, of profound old text with a newer tune is real. It, it, it's really fascinating to me. I agree. And, and, uh, you know, that we can have this text speak to us what the church's narrative has been through mm-hmm. its history and that we can take up that song anew in our generation is, uh, really quite profound. Um, and these are the same themes that we've been, you know, seeing all through the, uh, these epiphany hymns and this epiphany season, uh, the contrast of light and darkness, mm-hmm. uh, the hope that we have, uh, through the incarnate Christ who comes to take on our flesh, um, to, uh, save us from sin, death and the power of the devil. And, uh, um, you know, it all comes to the consummation in that sixth stanza. Uh, we're jubilant today, for you have washed our guilt away. Oh, hear the glad new song we sing on this, the birthday of our King. Alleluia. And we can live in that kind of perpetual birthday celebration that it's not just Christmas, but it's this, you know, ongoing life of who Jesus is and how we live in our baptism uh, into that birth and life and death and resurrection that uh, our Savior is for us. Yeah. And and even and even though this is a really old Latin text, um, as it's translated into English, you still, I mean, I would love to actually like read the actual Latin translation, the straight up Latin translation. That would be really cool. Yes, to see how it uh, all fits together. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. But even translated into English poetry, you still get a lot of the the it's it's so simple mm-hmm. and yet there's so much in here about 
um, about what we believe yeah, so about much, the epiphany. So much depth for sure. And I, I will say, I love this uh, Stephen Johnson melody, yeah. and it's so um, good for congregational singing. The Gettys, um, Keith and Kristen Getty, have a really, really neat and haunting uh, melody that they've put with this text. And uh, I, I commend that to the listeners as well, just to, to go find that and, and listen to that melody, because it, it has a different way of interpreting the text mm. um, in a really haunting way. So, yeah. yeah, I'll good. have to go find that after, yeah. after we're off here. <laughs> well, and it's, um, it, it, it's still, uh, it's this, tech, or this tune in, in LSB, it's still reminiscent of... Uh, Latin chant. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah, it functions the same way. And um, the other text with that tune, O Splendor of God's Glory Bright, you know, it kind of carries some of those same light and darkness themes and uh, uh, functions in very much the same way. Yeah, it's, it's, it really sings very well for the congregation. Yeah. Yeah. So we're nearly out of time. Um, any Anything else? We have like 10 seconds. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, I would commend to people the opportunity to to sing their faith. I mean, the, yeah. we as Lutherans have this wonderful opportunity to to know the story and then be able to sing the story. And that was, you know, um, the O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright, you know, uh, tell the story as part of that text. And uh, uh, great is he, the King of Glory. So yeah. we get to live out that story in all that we say and all that we do. Absolutely. Dr. Jim Marriott, Director of Musical Arts at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Thanks so much for joining me and talking about hymns. We could do this all day. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always fun. <laughs> yeah, you're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.